Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. Today I'm going to be installing the scuppers in the addition project. I brought the scuppers over here to pound out some kinks that they had in the corners. They were kind of sticking up. Don't want them poking through the rubber. Um, ball peen hammer on uh, tabletop does a good job of that I'm hoping that this they got fairly heavy solder on the back I'm hoping that doesn't cause it to uh, stick out any but the way the roof is with the with the uh, washers around the edges and stuff there's all kinds of there's all kinds of things bulging up so I guess in the end it's not going to make that much of a difference. So what I plan to do is first cut the hole in the, in the roof, the EPDM, and then slide this thing in and I want to pre-drill, I don't know how many, um, maybe five. Uh, nail holes top and bottom and possibly one here and here I don't I don't want this thing um, you could see how wavy it is I want this thing flat to the roof and then we have rubber covering here here and then going across here and here so that's a lot of things added to this area right where the water needs to get out. So, you know, I don't want this uh, metal bending up as well and blocking the water flow. I don't know. I'm, I'm new to this rubber roofing stuff. So I'm just doing it based on the videos I've seen. Um, I've watched a lot of Firestone videos. The actual roof kit video is not real good. Um, it has nothing about the scuppers and between their pocket guide, uh, pocket installation guide and their video there's differences in what they tell you to do from one to the other and the video definitely does not have all the information the pocket guide has so I'm just doing it the best way I can. Yeah, you can see the wave in this. I want to be able to hold this nice and flat and pound it in, you know, so maybe six nails across the top, six across the bottom, and then, like I said, one each halfway, halfway in. That's more penetrations through the rubber, but if any water gets in there anyways, no matter how many penetrations, the roof is going to leak, so it needs to be fixed. So, that's what I'm going to do. I've, I've already pounded these out as good as possible. I'm not going to, I'm just going to hand bend them, try to get them a little flatter before I put them in. Then I'll lay them out and drill them. What I'm going to do is drill, I'll drill with a hole smaller than the diameter of this not not too much smaller but maybe two-thirds of the diameter of this so that it's a tight fit copper is so malleable it'll just you know open up and accept the nail regardless and that should keep it nice and tight at least that's my thinking yeah i need to get this stuff done right now over on the addition there is a heater going inside the addition to heat up the roof boards or the deck up there and get rid of some of the dew. I got a fan up there and once the dew has evaporated, I can go up there and roll out the last sheet of EPDM and let that relax for a half hour. But I don't want to waste most of the day waiting for stuff to happen there's every different adhesive has a waiting time i think 
I, I got it wrong in the last video, so don't go by that. The relaxation time for the rubber is a half hour and contact adhesive it's you just go by feel but in this case it was about 20 minutes so and during those waiting times i don't want to be doing nothing so i want to have these ready to go and as soon as i start relaxing that rubber i want to start cutting the holes and installing these so that way while one thing is waiting on glue I can be working on another thing. Okay, I'm gonna get these drilled and I'll meet you back over on the roof. Okay, I have my second piece of rubber unrolled and cut to size. It's cut to the right size this time. Uh, 16 inches plus the the gap there. So that'll that'll stick up little more than two inches um, same thing here and I think it's six inches here because that uh, parapet wall is only four inches tall right there so I don't want too much of a hangover I actually trimmed it off right away on this side because all it's gonna do is catch the wind and uh, peel it back a little bit um, shortly, whenever I get these corners and stuff done, I'll be running the termination bar right below there. So it will actually be cut off right at the top of the termination bar, which will be just below where it is now. Then this is getting a cap on it uh, all the way around for the winter. And I don't know if the cap will be permanent or not. It's going to be a treated wood cap. In the end, the final product will be a deck board all the way around, a trim board. And then this will have a, uh, like a, what is that called, herringbone? Can't remember what the pattern is called, but this will have a, a deck that is 30 inch squares, roughly 30 inch. Uh, with the patterns going opposing every other one is opposing I think it's herringbone Okay, this overlaps four inches. I Messed around with it back and forth for a long time to make sure it's four inches on either end and four inches in the middle the instructions Say three inches the video says four inches uh, so I just went with the video. Um, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Roof kit really needs to get their whoa, printed instructions and their video in sync. Both, both need to have the same information and the video should be several videos showing details of different things instead of kind of rushed through. All right, I got to get some weights on this stuff, peel it back, and get this adhered down before the wind picks up. All right, I have one half glued down, and I lightly broomed it out. Now I have to come back and heavily broom it, push it down uh, real tight against the substrate. I have to do that. I believe it's 25 minutes, but I'm going to have to go look and double check then once I do that brooming I will roll this other half back and adhere that then I got to do the same thing lightly broom it get out any air bubbles and then uh, come back later and heavily broom it to make sure it's adhered to the substrate in the meantime I plan on doing the scuppers so I have to get over across the street and start drilling those scuppers, um, but I'm gonna have to run into the house and uh, double check on the time on this. I have my instructions for seaming it, but I took the instructions uh, for just gluing it down, took them in last night. 
Okay, I'm gonna go get them holes drilled and then I'll come back and cut out the scupper openings. I haven't filmed very much of anything because you've seen it all yesterday. What I'm up to right now is doing the multi-purpose adhesive uh, six inches onto the roof membrane and on the six inch reinforcing strip. Then I'll come back and do the parapet with two-sided latex for a contact adhesive. Then I got to do both of the sides before I can come back and do the seam here. It just, that's how it works out. I, if I do the seam first, then I won't be able to get back in there. I, I won't be able to open that up and get in there and do the multi-purpose adhesive because it'll be glued down. The seam is going to go all the way to the end here. And then there's a, again, I forget what it's called, but it's a round, I believe it's a round thingamajigger. Um, but whatever it is, you, you seam it where it goes up the wall like that. You uh, cover the seam where it goes up the wall like that. When I get to that, I'll, I'll explain what that's called and everything. So I'm in a huge rush, so I can't video much. I, at the very minimum, I have to get this watertight by tomorrow. Right now they're calling for rain tomorrow evening, but last I seen evening was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So I have the rest of the day today and who knows tomorrow to get this watertight. I should have the main area completely done and some of the edges might not be 100% done, but hopefully I'm completely done, but I doubt that. I have one of the scuppers drilled, pre-drilled, let me show you that, and popped into place. So what I'm gonna do is kind of kneel up on that, get it tight into the corner, then nail it down, then it gets treated as an edge flashing, and I'm going to do roughly what the edge flashing kit says to do. They have it actually overlapping the metal quite a bit. Um, I think it's a 5 inch flashing, and they have they have it overlapping everything but a half inch or something like that. Crazy amount, but I'm going to overlap it. Uh, oh, I, I can go like three inches here, three and a half inches. So that's about what I'll do. If it doesn't work, hopefully it lasts until spring when I can get up here and do something different. So that's where I'm at. I'll check back in when I start to do the flashing and nailing and stuff on this stuff. You don't need to see any more of that uh, gluing down the rubber. Okay, I'm trying to stay out of the wind. It's very windy out. And the AC is running right next to me. But I have the first copper scupper in place. So that worked out perfect. These are inch and a half copper nails. It's basically the only ones they sell at Menards, but they worked out fine. Um, any that protrude into the space below, I can just push the insulation up into it. It has a nice pitch to it. And what I need to do now is put that, that uh, I guess it's called flashing tape get that all the way around it and I have a termination bar that'll be going right above it to terminate this stuff so it's going to be really well sealed from the top uh, hopefully it doesn't leak but time will tell okay I have glue drying over there so I gotta go tend to it all right I have all three of my reinforcing strips glued to the membrane 
Now, you can see that the stuff that goes up onto the parapet is folded over. That allows me to fold this seam back and do the seam. I guess I'm going to do it right up to where it hits the parapet and then it'll look just like it looks right now. Then I think I'll do both of these short walls that overlap with multi-purpose adhesive and I'm going to do this one with latex. So I really got to get going. I still have two more scuffers to put in and I have to do the strips on them and stuff. So I really, really got to get moving. Okay, another exhausting day. I've been rushing like crazy to get my corners all done. That way it's going to rain tomorrow. That way it is not going to leak into the structure uh, behind any of the rubber here except for these scuppers and I hope to get the scuppers done tomorrow morning. I got that one in but I got to do the the tape flashing. So what I'll do tomorrow is, well tonight I'm going to drill the other two scuppers, drill them and file them and then first thing in the morning come out and do the you got to scrub them with a, a seam cleaner and then then start putting the flashing on them. So I should be able to get it done before it rains tomorrow. They keep changing the time and the amount, so I have no idea what's going on. If it does rain, like overnight, no big deal. It's just going to get a little bit wet. Um, inside the wall there. Oh, the cat's coming up. But I'd rather it didn't. So I'm going to try to get those in before the rain tomorrow. Everything else should be just fine. This is a normal corner. Yeah, you see these... They're hard to keep these, the very end, closed. But you run this into the corner, run this as tight as you can, and then you uh, seal the leftover together. You gotta put contact adhesive on everything. And then you stick that triangle over to the side. When it has the termination bar going across it, there's no way that's going to leak. This uh, is kind of like a tub now. That one is obviously different because I screwed up on the, the height of that uh, of the material that goes up the parapet. But I will be fixing that. That'll that'll actually be very watertight. I'm going to have a piece go complete down and completely over that stuff so and the same goes with that and that'll bring this whole side up to the eight inch minimum that they require when you terminate on a house like this there's more details that are going to happen here and there where the parapet hits the house but I'll show you that when I get to it. Like I said earlier, these corners are supposed to have a patch going over them. I ordered the seam tape. Almost every procedure requires seam tape, but Menards does not sell the seam tape. Big dummies. So this right here requires a cover. Um, Again, I, I can't remember what the hell it's called. If it's just one of them round patches or if it's something else. So that requires it on both sides. I need to put that last piece on both sides here where I screwed up. 
and then termination bars all the way around and then this will get capped with a treated wood cap for the winter. I want to be able to remove the cap for when I build the deck up here. It's going to be a real awesome deck. It's going to be, I'd like to make it from quartered white oak, but we'll see what the price is. Quartered or rift sawn, not sure. But this will have a thin black railing, which will come up to yay far. And the deck will actually be at this rim level. Oh, actually even a little higher than that because this gets a three-quarter inch board on it now and then it gets another board the same thickness as the deck board or the deck boards on top of that and then everything will be flush and actually overhang just a hair. It'll be a, a real interesting look. So if you want to see all that stuff make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon so you're notified when I post new videos. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. I generally answer them all. And if you share and or give the video a thumbs up, it greatly helps the channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day.